Hey, this is Betsy, and you're listening to Your Morning Mana, the best Monday morning wake-up show. Did you know that every week there's a challenge issued? And now, and now this and week, now. This joy, joy challenge. 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 Right here on Your Morning Mana, every Monday morning a joy challenge is offered. Tune in to see how you can bring joy to your world. You have been challenged. Now go out and spread joy. Does this bring you joy? Me neither. How about this? This is Paul from your Morning Mana crew. Join us here on WCC from 8 to 10 a.m. on Monday mornings, where we guarantee to bring you joy. This is Jim Hanna of Oz Sunshine. My wife Anita and I have over 25 years experience in the decorated apparel industry. Oz Sunshine is a Christian-based family-owned business that offers screen printing, embroidery, promotional products, signs, vinyl decals, and vehicle wraps. We offer fast, friendly service at a reasonable price. At Oz Sunshine, all customers are treated like family. Our goal is to develop a relationship that will last a lifetime. You may reach us on the web at awesunshine.com or call us at 803-226-0532. That's 803-226-0532. Spreading God's love one order at a time here at Aw Sunshine. You are listening to WUCC 99.9 FM, a station dedicated to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. 24 hours a day. Hey, this is Jace Turner. Be sure to join the Morning Man Crew every Monday morning from 8 to 10 a.m. right here on God's Radio Station, 99.9 FM. Hey there. Thank you for listening to 99.9 FM. Because of our loyal listeners, we are able to share truth, like on Mondays with Morning Manna. Sowing into this ministry helps spread the word of Jesus Christ, and your financial support makes it possible to send the truth around the world. Thank you for listening to WUCC, and God bless. You're listening to your Morning Manna. You are under arrest. Does this sound familiar? If you ever find yourself in this situation, be sure to call A1 Bonding and Enterprises. This is a family-owned Christian business that is here to help. Call their Aiken office at 803-642-5190. That's 803-642-5190. And you can tell them you heard about them on Your Morning Manor. Hi, this is Dana Turner with All About You Hair and Nail Salon. And we are proud sponsors of Your Morning Manna. Listen every Monday from 8 to 10 a.m. right here on 99.9 FM, the voice of Truth Station. Hey, CSRA, if your lawn is in need of some TLC, how about giving Tony of Riverfront Lawn Care a call at 803-257-5832? That's 803-257-5832. And remember, they always give you mo for your money. Hi, this is Dana. Be sure to check us out every Monday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for the Morning Mana Show right here on 99.9 FM WUCC. Hey, y'all, this is April with Morning Mana Crew, and I just want to invite you to listen to us on Monday mornings from 8 to 10 a.m. here on WUCC Live. Saddle up your horses. Good morning. It's time to saddle up for your weekly ride with Morning Mana and the Morning Mana Crew. Good morning, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Dana. That's okay. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. Let's get everything set here. Wow. I just have to say, you can tell when one of the spokes that's, in the wheel right. is that's missing. Right. And right. we're missing April this morning. Man, my goodness. The main spoke. Oh, goodness gracious. 
when I got that text this morning, I thought, okay, we need to get there because I got to get everything set up on the right. camera end right. that I never do because April's oh, always yeah. here doing it. So anyway, we're excited to be here this beautiful Monday morning. It's raining outside and we were so excited. I mean, we walked outside and we're like, oh, it's raining. I know, it's almost like yeah. a little nip in there. Yeah, wasn't it? it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Okay, guys, um, Bill's going to be joining us in a minute. He's running around the studio making sure things have <laughs> transferred over on the radio and all that kind of stuff. So I'm excited about the program this morning. Me we got too. a special guest coming in. Her name is Heather Sargent, and she's going to get to tell you about some upcoming event coming here in Aiken mm-hmm. that we're pretty excited about. But we'll go ahead this morning and um, do some shout outs to those who listen. We got Joey Campbell and Tony Myers yeah. uh, already joined us this morning. Um, let's see who else do we got. That's all I've got on. That's Come right. on, people, join us. Uh, we'll yep, wait just a couple minutes here and say a little something. We'll give you a shout out. I know, right? Bill, a lot back to you, Tony. I know, right? Um, goodness gracious, oh, I think we're having some technical uh, difficulties this morning in the studio. But anyway, we're excited to be here today. We are. We've got a great program lined up. And um, <clears throat> again, I'll say for those that are watching in the studio now, we're missing April this morning because one of your children is yep. not feeling well. Yeah, Bella's been sick for a couple of days. Yeah, so, and yeah. Um, we just we hate get that. Get her to the doctor today. Oh my goodness. Yeah, hopefully it's something just, we yeah. thought it may be a little virus or right, something, that but has it's to still work. hanging around. So yeah. we See what's going on. Bless her heart. Well, we'll have to remember to pray for her this morning. So um, I guess, Paul, if you want to, we'll go ahead and start the program with the prayer and the scripture. And, I sure um, will. And today's uh, prayer segment will be brought to us by Michelle Curls, yes. our friend. Um, she's a sweet woman of faith, and we're just thankful for her and her sponsorship and her willingness to do so. Amen. Uh, I just want to share um, scripture of the day. Okay. It's Psalms fifty nine sixteen, and it says, but as for me, I will... I shall sing of your strength. Yes, I shall joyfully sing of your loving kindness in the morning. For you have been my stronghold and a refuge in the day of my distress. Mm. So, Lord, we just come to you this morning, Father. Yes, we are Jesus. just so thankful, Father, that you are our refuge. You are our stronghold. You are the place that we can seek rest in. And, Father, we thank you for your the strength that you give us when we are weak. Lord, we thank you for your joy. And, Father, we pray that joy goes forth this morning. Yes, Jesus. Even in the dark times, we seek your joy. And we know that it's there for us to have. We thank you for hope and mercy and love and grace. Mm-hmm. And we thank you for Jesus most of all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. So, okay, let me get this stopped here. So, I guess um, at this point we usually move on into our conversations but until bill gets in here paul we got it we got to handle it so we um, got it going on we got it going on this morning so uh we can go ahead and talk about a little thing i think we're still doing this coming friday night or we still got that on the calendar for our Mm -hmm. uh, morning man after dark yep looking forward to that yeah that'll be always fun fun. yeah always fun um i think we're going to be tackling some pretty heavy subjects this mm-hmm. friday night yep, from what i'm hearing yeah yeah and so um it's going to be good i'm not even sure what time we're starting it yet and um but i'm excited about it yeah. we always enjoy those times together so um <clears throat> excuse me um our conversation with the crew this morning uh bill was going to bring so uh do you want to let's just switch that around and um yeah that's fine try our this or that segment yeah as we're we waiting okay <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog there in my throat this morning. Oh, okay, there he is. Well, I mean, we were. I mean, it's all good. Let's make it sure. I'm sorry, babe. Go ahead. Making... What mic are you on? Six. I'm sorry. I was making sure we had. Uh, we were on the <clears throat> air. Oh, okay. Um, because none of our overhead intercoms are working. Yeah, I think uh, they've been that way for a bit. <clears throat> no one's passed that knowledge along to oh, me. Okay. But anyway, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I can't hear anything in my ear. Let's see. I'm telling you, <clears throat> one person being gone and oh, the yeah. whole thing gets... I done. mean, April yeah, being gone is not messing with my ear. <clears throat> no, <laughs> but I'm just talking about the whole flow of how everything's are oh, going. Yeah. Well, you get used to each other. You do. You really do. So anyway, we're excited this morning um, to be here. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Diane. She's joined us and watching this morning, so um, I guess we'll move on. Um, we got a, we're gonna 
I guess. Yeah, we can uh, start. Com- oh, yeah, I'm hearing it now. You good. got it? Okay, yeah, good. We can start conversation. Um, and now, for your listening pleasure, conversation with the crew. Okay, well, um, today is, is today April's birthday? Mm, no, Wednesday. Next, okay, Wednesday. Don't scare me like that. Ah. <laughs> okay, well, March, stop, stop, exactly. well, anyway, we were involved in a surprise party uh, for April Saturday. Yes, yes. Now, I wasn't there for the surprise, so I don't even know if she was surprised. So, was she? She was. She was very surprised. Oh, excellent. Well, well I mean, there at the end she was. I'm not sure in the beginning she thought Paul was up to something. Oh, so she kind of, she yeah. knew you were up to something. She, April can smell a rat. She uh-huh. knows when something's going on. Uh-huh. So she had a clue, a little bit of a clue, but then I threw her off. Right. And then when she put, we were pulling up and she didn't see any cars, she was like, oh, Yeah, okay. that kind of probably messed with that, her. That really messed with her. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. I thought they were going to do something surprising. <laughs> I told her, I said, she said, something going on. I said, April, don't be pathetic. Don't be you're making you're breaking my heart here, girl. You think something's <laughs> happening that ain't threw the guilt on her. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, so well, gosh. anyway, and that's kind of the conversation I wanted to go with today was surprise parties. Do you like them, or do you prefer like a regular planned party? Because I've had them both. Um, uh, to me, a surprise party or is straight from the pits of hell. <laughs> Um, because you had to lie, there's deceit, and I just feel if a person's going to lie about a birthday party, they don't lie about anything. That's just my opinion. Wow. Oh, that's know. a little harsh. Well, I mean, you're lying, period. That is a little harsh. You're and he's lying. saying that because we, we had a, a one time a surprise party for him, his 40th, right. and he really had no clue. And so that was a good... Um, that was uh, a good surprise. Right. It was funny because he thought we were going. To, I didn't yeah. lie about it. He knew we were going to a party. He just mm-hmm. thought it was an anniversary yeah. party for somebody else. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing, too, is uh, when this uh, whole thing came about, I don't like having to keep a secret from right. April. We mm-hmm. tell each other everything. Yeah, I mean, right. everything. And so it was like I just was keep my mouth shut about anything. And uh, so as the day got there, I mean, she started, you know, you know, kids can't you know some yeah. of the kids knew about it so they kind of would say things or whatever but not really giving it away but april can pick up on stuff right so, but yeah just having to keep something quiet now mm-hmm. i threw her another one uh some years back and it was just pure torture for me <laughs> oh yeah i can't stand it because you got to keep a secret right you gotta watch what you say because i would i mean i don't know how many times i almost slipped up and said something about yeah. the other night right you know? so just have to watch what you say and so it's just a constant battle of keeping it quiet so yeah. i don't like that part well you know it was funny because we all got there early and we parked down the road and her mom was bringing us in by the golf cart you know yeah. we parked like way down the road uh-huh. and stuff because we didn't want her to suspect right. uh when she pulled up and it was funny so we're all out in the backyard like a bunch of kids when we see y'all because herb's watching and he's like okay they just pulled in the driveway everybody be quiet so everybody was you know like hiding and stuff because we didn't want her to hear us yeah um but um it was a nice, I think what Cheryl was going for was her to have a nice evening, mm-hmm. relaxing evening mm-hmm. without kids, mm-hmm. without anybody's kids. Yeah. It was just a night for adults to sit around yeah. and talk and visit. And she the, had a good time. She yeah. enjoyed it. The she food really was awesome. Oh, my goodness. It was good. Yeah, it was some good food and that yeah. dessert cake oh, and yeah. that apple stuff that Cheryl made. Mm-hmm. Wow. Man, we had a good time. They liked to entertain yeah they do they really do herb likes to cook on the grill so any chance he gets to cook on oh, the yeah. grill he loves to do that yeah so. and he said that was the first time he cooked on his new grill that was yeah his. he had just got that one uh-huh yeah, he's got a smoker now he's he's really good with it mm-hmm. yeah. see i want a smoker and i'm back i'm sorry uh we got our special guest was calling oh okay because when i tell people to come to the end of the road they just don't they don't trust themselves <laughs> yeah. it's like i feel like i've went past the end of the whole world and uh, yeah. i said you got to keep on coming yeah, like, she coming keep down on. whiskey yeah yeah, yeah so keep on coming she said i had a note to that said eight o'clock and i don't know if it was to leave the house at eight or to be here at eight so i said it was to leave your house at eight and she's like well i sit out there and make some phone calls so uh-huh. when we go to break i'll run out there and get okay her. all right but what? anyway i apologize for everything i know everybody's interested in what i have to say so <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know where y'all went after I left. But you know, to me, a lie is a lie. It don't matter. There's no good lie. So mm. that's how I feel about surprise birthday parties. Now, if you don't tell a lie, doing it, that's fine. Because some people 
um like i'm getting to the age where i don't really want to celebrate my birthday i just want right. to just you know just it's another it day by. it's another just day, another right. day. Right. now um, now april gets upset with me about this one is that we throw a party every year for our kids and my view is i know this might sound harsh but do they really need a birthday party every year you know that's your children i know I know, and I knew I was going to get some. some well, stuff. you know, I'm kind of with you. I mean, a birthday party it, to me could be just something as simple as yeah. a cake with a family exactly. and right. let's cook a meal. I, yeah, I have no and ha- problem with that. Yeah. But, yeah, but having not, to go to but a having place to go to and, all that yeah. big stuff, no, it is not necessary. We have birthday parties in July, August, September, and October. Wow. So, so it's so like partying up. Oh yeah, we party the summer up. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. So I'm, but I'm, yeah, no, cake and ice cream, absolutely have some friends I, over. Something yeah, like something that. Something big like. Got to go to a place, rent somewhere out. No, that should be like on special. Right. That should be. Is that that necessary every year? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. But a celebration of their day at birth, yes. Yes. Um, I've got to stop right now because these people. uh, Tony Myers is with Bill on it. And uh, Pastor Stephen Phillips said, preach it, Bill. So, um it's very rarely I get I get comments like that, so I wanted to shout <laughs> out. <sure> shout out. <laughs> Emphasize that. Yeah, I wanted right. to shout that out. And so. Diane, bless your heart, she says, I've never had a surprise party. Oh. Well, what? you're not missing nothing, sister. I'll tell you that right now. It, um, I, because, like we said earlier, my 40th was a surprise, and it was just brutal um, to realize that all my friends would lie to me. Oh, that quickly and that efficiently. That's what really bothered me. <laughs> that well. The, yeah, the efficiency of, of the lies. So Mm-mm-mm. it was, uh, now I know Dana put a lot of effort into it, a lot of work because uh, I was totally surprised. But I was like, oh my Lord, I was thinking if they'll lie about that, they'll lie about anything. Mm. So it kind of um, made me sleep with one eye open from there on oh, out. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You're so crazy. <laughs> but I, I mean, I like. I mean, to me, parties are good. Now, I like a parties. Them. Yeah, I like parties. I like them um, if I'm the one planning them. I don't necessarily want to be the one that's surprised. Mm. Oh, yeah. well, right, right. And Bill can attest to that. <laughs> uh, I gotta say something. Joey Campbell, he's a cousin, he, uh-huh. and uh, bless his heart, he gets in Facebook jail regularly. He's always he'll disappear for a few weeks, and then he'll say, "Well, I'm back." <laughs> <laughs> Cause he's he's hardcore conservative, oh, yeah. <laughs> so he gets in trouble a lot. So we're glad to have you, Joey. <laughs> oh my goodness! So what is Facebook jail? I've heard people talk about that. They, they just, just uh, they block you, block basically. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Facebook does. They cut you off. Okay. I've heard people say I didn't yeah. never know what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, and they've got. It's funny because you can get a GIF about coming out of Facebook jail. You can type right. that in. You know, getting out of Facebook jail, and uh, one of them, the one that I really enjoy is uh. McMahon from WWE, he's walking out, you know, the way he walks on. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Walking out of Facebook jail is like, you know, have him walking. So, That's funny. so it's, um, it is funny uh, how, how, you know, because I believe totally in free speech. I might not like what you're saying, but by God, this is American, you can say it. It's gotten to the point where you can sue people if they say something, you know. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking slander, I'm talking. Like, if I state my beliefs, if it offends somebody, they can pretty much sue me now or put me in Facebook jail or uh, cut my Twitter account off or, mm-hmm. you know, that's uh, that's bad. But as we say, we talk about joy here, so we're going to um, get off that subject pretty quick. I was going to say, because I can go down that rabbit trail. I got a scripture for you yeah, on that Yeah, that's one what I was thinking because yeah. uh, I was like, Ooh, <laughs> we, got, we can't do that. We can't do that. Yeah. So. so anyway, we were talking about birthday parties. Yeah, and so- special either a special party or a surprise party um i'm a totally against surprise parties so but but yet he'll surprise an event on someone <clears throat> no and, you're talking about when we got uh-huh. remarried well i mean hey i we didn't get married in church first time i want to get married in the eyes of god but now what i will say to bill about that is that he didn't he didn't lie. I mean, like, well, I knew I something was going on. I just didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. So no. that made the difference. Yeah. And with children I have, they, um, bless their heart. That's all I can say about my children. Bless their heart. <laughs> <laughs> well. They weren't too helpful, but they did help in their I, special way. <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned it here on the show before, but uh, at the church years ago, uh, we had a couple. They didn't go to the church, but they wanted to use our church to renew their vows and it was the man was the one that set it up it was a surprise renewal right that's kind of what i did and he had 
I mean, it was, the church was packed. This is the church we're at now. And so they had me run the soundboard and all that. So I'm, 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 I'm cool, you know, fine. And they had the lady come through the front door of the church and had her, her dad or her brother, somebody bring her. Mm. And I don't know how they got that word that out. But anyway, when she opened that door and she saw it was a surprise renewal, her face was like not, ha- not happy. Oh, she I kind of got that same face. And it was like, <laughs> and people were standing up clapping and all that. And I felt so bad for that guy, you know, because he had to walk by there and get her. But and then by the end of the night, though, she was fine. But I, I, I right. take it she didn't like surprises. So. Well, see, my daughters were supposed to uh, pick her up and inform her then, mm-hmm. you know. So she kind of knew we were doing a renewal. She didn't realize how many people would be there, or, you know, what we were going to do. But um, my daughters went upstairs and pretty much were having their own little party upstairs amongst herself and Dana was about to leave and she's like well let me let me tell them I'm going so she had to holler up there and say hey I'm leaving they're like well <laughs> yeah I mean it was because yeah. I was downstairs getting ready and then I said um, okay well I'm gone he said to be there by this time and so I hear and then I, I'm like man, they the still girls up there. they're still up there I was like, okay girls I'm on my way I'm gone and they was like no you can't go away but we're right. supposed to take you you know and so they had yeah. to delay. I asked that would have been good. Yeah, yeah. I asked them to delay just a second because her, one of her oldest friends was on the way to the church. She just turned on the bypass. I said, y'all just delay a little bit. Of course, a little bit to them is like 10 minutes. Right. You know, instead of just a minute. I mean, know? we went to the store. We went to all the, I mean, it was just like, great day. Uh, so we get, the, she gets there finally. Uh, but I got our grandson, Jace, walking her down the aisle, oh. and, you know, and uh Good many people were there. Yeah, it was. That was before we met y'all. It y'all was a crowd. There. Yeah, it yeah. was a uh, crowd so. there. I don't know if y'all were. Uh, y'all had already left. I think y'all probably were still there the other night when I told the story where uh, Cheryl and Herb threw me a surprise party. Uh, this has been probably 10 years ago. And uh, April was supposed to. They told April, you know, we'll <laughs> get in there a little bit you know, later. <laughs> Well, she and Herb was cooking a bunch of chicken. Well, she took me to S and S out to eat. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and then we come home. So I, think she, I think she was pregnant at the time, maybe oh, with Bella or somebody. <laughs> and she was like, "Well, let's just go out to eat. Go a little, get a little something to eat." So she ends up going to S and S, and then she said, "We got to go by mom and daddy's." And we go in there. There, we got this big old feast. <laughs> and I was like, "Boy, I'll tell you what? Now I'm not hungry, but boy, it sure does smell good." Oh, that is the funniest thing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I remember her saying, why did you take him out to eat? <laughs> that's all I could think of. Yeah. That's I'm all I could think thinking, of. I'm sitting here thinking, S&S. That's a good way to delay somebody for a little <laughs> yeah. bit, though. Just take him out to eat. Yeah. It don't matter. That is too funny. April's well, trip. to me, it would have been something like, hey, let's go get an ice cream or just something yeah. small or something yeah. just to delay She's you. Like, a few let's minutes. go get a full meal. Yeah, I got to run by Walmart real quick. Yeah. I mean, that's the best thing. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing with April. April knows my personality, and so she can pick up if I'm trying to pull something over on her. Right. So, like, the other night, just from our house to their house is only a mile. And so it was just, it was a torture of a mile. I would have <laughs> told kept her. asking question after question. I was like, babe, I would have said, look, we're doing a surprise birthday party for you, and you just ruined the surprise. I'd have browbeat her a little bit and then pulled in. There wouldn't be nobody, you know, in the driveway. Yeah. So they say, I told you, and she would have got upset. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoy torturing her. I see she's not watching. She's probably sleeping, yeah, she and I don't blame her. With, she, she is. She laying down to right. bed with Bella when I left. It doesn't so. matter. She could have the radio on, I guess. Yeah. But um, I'd like to give a shout-out to Michelle Curl. She's watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian, Brian Davenport says good morning. Good morning I got to tell you, y'all are blessed to have the Davenport. Oh, yeah. Um, Boy, they're just. We? Yeah, I mean, they're just yeah. good people. You type of people you love automatically. I mean, just, you know, just walk in the room, you you enjoy their company. Because mm-hmm. they're both sweet people and their kids are. Uh, the kids are amazing. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're good kids. So they sure are. We love you, Brian, and i uh, glad you're watching and all. I see it. Well, so we've been on the topic of, of surprise birthday parties yeah, this morning. For or against? Uh, I'm against, and evidently. Uh, the other two, they're they're for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it depends. I, I'm not, it just depends. I'm okay with it if you're surprised to me, but I don't have to, like I have to keep secrets. Well, it's just torture to me. You know, it tickles. Well, it don't tickle me. It <laughs> saddens me more than anything. But the the amount of lying we do to our children, to our spouse, but nobody, you know, everybody says no lying, right. and but it is acceptable 
lies. That's the only yeah. way you can put it. Well, I didn't know. lie the other night. She said, are we going out to eat? I said, yes, we're going out to eat. We did not go eat at our house. We went out of our house to That's eat. That's right. But somebody, I'm sure, lied to her. No, we're not doing that. We're just, yeah. you know, she well, might have called me, somebody. It wasn't, it wasn't on me. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I mean, because yeah. in December, there's a, a real big lie per- perpetrated against oh, the yeah. children. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so it, it it's just funny to me. It, I just shake my head about it. I guess when you put it that way, there's no, I mean, really. That yeah, we and you can't do. change, you know, you can't, especially something as big as, you know, the December celebration. Um, You can't change that overnight. And, you know, did it, it hurt me? Yeah, when I found out it went through it, it bothered me tremendously. Because <laughs> 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 I, I didn't like Santa Claus too much because he never brought what I wanted. Right. Well, you know, close, there's a, lot, not, there's a uh, lot of deceptions perpetrated. I mean, when right. we talk about. I mean, we got the biggest one coming up that the church participates in coming up next month that is the most, Oh yeah, the, you know, Halloween. Yeah, it's trunk something or treat that, or, that the church should not even be taking part in, in my to, opinion. But. Yeah, well, I mean, we tried to take it, but, you know, it's still. Anyway, so, okay, guys, so that was good. Let me, let's me let move on to our community happening yeah, segment. Um, uh, let me get it right here. And you told me to pull something up. Mm-hmm. I got it wrote down if it's what I'm thinking about. All right, Paul, if you got it written down, you go for it. Well, I have 929 uh-huh. or 928. That's the uh, what this is coming up Friday. This coming Friday. Is Deanne Andrews and Friends at Bath Pentecostal Holiness Church. Yes. That's put on by um, Field to Overflowing Ministries mm-hmm. and Miss Donna King. And that will be at 7 p.m. at Bath Pentecostal Holiness Church, 3755 Jefferson Davis Highway. You're not going to miss it. It's right. Going, it is uh, going to be some <clears throat> dynamic singing. I and and they're that. doing, I think, a silent cake auction they and are. stuff like that because mm-hmm. they're trying to raise money uh, for their youth building. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to be, I think they're going to do a love offering and stuff mm-hmm. like that taken up at the yeah. service. But we encourage you to go and um, be a part of that at 7 p.m. Yep. this coming Friday night. Yep. And also the following day, uh, Saturday, that Saturday nine, uh, the 29th. From 11 to 2 at the CSRE Worship Center. That's the church that uh, myself and April Pastor, we're having a family field day. And so mm-hmm. we're going to have kickball, yeah. volleyball, kickball, badminton, cornhole tournament, uh, a dessert bake-off, oh, all so kinds of good stuff. You're going to have volleyball? I'll, I'll we'll try to get caught up there. Yeah, I'll get on her team. I don't want to be <laughs> opposing that. <laughs> no, because she's very uh, opposing so, when it comes to volleyball. And I may or may not have college football playing in the, in the fellowship Uh-oh, ball, too. So. Yeah, y'all please plan Let's to see. attend that. If you're local, um, most of your morning man will be there at some point. Yeah, so, that'll be fun. Um, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Tony I'll be Ma- coming right after work. So. Tony Meyer says if you're in Pennsylvania, he has a three-day conference going, 7 p.m. each day. Check out his website for more details, TonyBelieves.com. Awesome, yes. Tony. Good awesome. Stuff. Now, to go along with our special guest today, um, which is Heather Sargent, um, she's doing a, she's bringing in a, a, a well. It's a guest. A guest, yeah. yeah and he's a detective. But anyway, it's uh, called Faith and Reason, and it's Thursday, October 11th. You can buy tickets now at AkinFaith.com. That's AkinFaith, that's one word, dot com. I encourage y'all to go and check it out because if you've seen Guy's Not Dead 2, uh, the gentleman that's coming was in that movie. He had a, you know, a brief a role in appearance. it as yeah. the detective, so, right? Yeah, right? it's pretty cool. good because, well, I'll wait. I'll hold well, she's going yeah, to tell be here everybody about it. She's going to be in the studio yeah. shortly and then we'll get to tell everybody about it. So we're excited about that. So we got yeah. some upcoming things coming up. I know that... Um, um, it's getting that time of year where all the fall festivals and the different things are starting. And I know at our church, Hope Ministries is getting ready to do their big fundraiser kickoff and different things like that and go out into the community. So, I mean, there's a lot of things going on mm-hmm. this time yeah, so, of year. Yeah, it's going to, um, from here on out, we're going to be kind of busy. Yeah, so it is gonna that's be a good busy. thing. I'm just ready for the weather part. Yeah, know, me right? too. Um, I'm tired of sweating. All right, man, I, I tell you, I, everybody at work, makes the same statement it's you know because we work and it's just hot yeah it's very very hot uh-huh. and it just seems like your body just gets more and more worn mm-hmm. down as the summer goes along oh yeah. i bet i and bet so. working in heat like that i know when i was talking to my son and daughter-in-law the other day 
uh, Saturday, they said, oh, man, it's 65 degrees outside right now. The sun's shining. And they have a true fall there. Right. They right. really have a true That's why I'd fall love to, season. I'd love to move in that region because they they have all seasons. And we're, we're heading up there um, on October the 8th to see the grandkids for a few days. And so mm-hmm. I'm excited about that mm-hmm. to get to be in a little bit, little bit cooler weather. And it's so funny. Yesterday we were talking to um, – I called to talk to them, and my three-year-old grandson answered the phone, and he said, hello. And I said, hey, Sawyer, what are you doing? He said, Nana, what are you doing? And we were talking. And um, I said, well, what are you fixing? He said, I'm going. We're getting ready to go to the woods. And I said, the woods? And he said, yeah, Dad and Jacks are in the woods, and we're going to the woods. So I think they were going over to find them. They were building deer stands or doing something like that. So he said, um, he said, I thought you go to church. <laughs> And I said, I did go to church, did you? He said, yes. He said, now we're going to the woods. He said, but you're in South Carolina, and you can't go there because everything's flooded. I guess they've been watching the news right. and stuff. Well, it was so funny. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, his mother's real good with because they, they know we're in South Carolina, so anything that's happening, she'll show them, you know, yeah. and let them know that, you know, Nan and Papa are okay. Cause. Yeah, and I said, baby, it's not flooded where Nan and Papa are at. We're fine. He because, said, oh, okay. You know, speaking of that, we just experienced a hurricane, Florence. So um, all of us made it out good, but there's still a whole bunch of people suffering. Yes. And especially in Conway, uh-huh. South Carolina, yeah. it's uh, it's about half underwater due I to know. the river there and the, the flooding because people, you know, don't realize the it rains, but it, it flows downstream. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Everything comes downstream. So you're looking at a, a lot of flooding, even even now mm-hmm. uh dana and myself we were in the mountains so wasn't really concerned about it and um i mean it, as far as the weather there right, we had yeah. beautiful weather yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty <laughs> and uh i i didn't think it was bad as they were gonna yeah um you know put it out there which they have to do that to get people to leave and, and make it you know, make them understand the seriousness of it people right? still don't leave i don't understand right. that but i think they had what i know Somebody said there was three people that died in Wilmington. I know of that could have been avoided. Could have been avoided. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they one, would have left. Yeah. One fellow went back to check on his hunting dogs, and he he got he passed one woman. A uh, tree fell on her car as she was leaving. So mm-hmm. it's just a bad, uh, bad situation. Well, I saw the For pictures sure. of uh, Conway High School, which we passed on the way. Right, to uh, Beach if you go to Myrtle Beach, you pass. Yeah, I was shocked. At, right, I'm I trying was to too. think where that water would have come from. I guess the river. Or, because mm, you've got all those, uh, you know, you forget you cross right past Conway, you cross that body yeah, of water. That's what I was trying to think in my mind, trying right. to think where's the nearest river mm-hmm. to that. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you had a you got a detainment pond that yeah. looks like a lake for the uh, power plant, yeah. and then, they drained that now. Yeah, well, it's probably full now. Yeah, probably. Is, um, for sure. And then you've got a uh, what I call a Blackwater River right past that, and it's just. Yes, the hurricane's over, but you we still have people in South Carolina suffering and um if you get a get a second, pray for those people. That's right. For because sure. uh we've got a friend that lives in Conway and mm-hmm. she's not being flooded out but Yet, she's it's in her that, neighborhood. Right. So yeah. um I just hate it for pray for all those yeah, in there. I just hate it for that. Okay, guys, so those, um, once again, we've got several things coming up. Um, Field Overflowing this Friday night is doing a singing at Bath Pentecost Holiness Church. Next day is the Family Fun Day at at, uh, CSRA Worship Center. So we're excited about that. So y'all please come out and join us for those. I cannot wait for that to play me some kickball. (laughs) Hi, this is Michelle Curls. Jeremy and I are the owners of Aiken Furniture Company. We have a new name, new location with new looks for your living room, dining room, bedroom, and we also have mattresses. We are located at 2535 Whiskey Road in Aiken Exchange Shopping Center beside Target. If you come to our store and mention that you heard our commercial on Your Morning Manna, whether on the radio or Facebook, we will give you 10% off in order, $499 and up. So come check us out and we look forward to seeing you. Hi, this is Addison. Come see my mom and dad for quality furniture at discounted prices. Summer or winter, Facebook or Twitter, steak or chicken wings. It could be so many things right here on this or that. With the crew, what will you choose? What will you choose today? All right. All right. Now, this is going to be a little bit... 
you can have multiple options today. okay we'll just go so this that this yeah, that or other that thing. the other and, and plus whatever some. yeah and plus okay. some. and plus some okay <clears throat> all right but somebody said something the other day and it just made me think it's like why do people say that the way they say it okay and this it has was, got me intrigued it now. Was, mm-hmm. they called it salmon uh-huh. now to me it's salmon Oh, the L is not silent. <laughs> okay. I saw me. So what, what is, now I've got a couple others too, but is it, what do you call it? It's salmon. I have salmon and eggs. <laughs> so my I L is, it, is a little bit silent. I call yeah. it salmon. Well, I use the L. But then, you know, I was thinking about others like pecan and then people call it a pecan. pecan right. It's always been pecan pie, so yeah. that's uh-huh. what I go with. I think from the South, it's definitely pecan. Yeah. If you up right. this pecan. Yes. I can't imagine saying, would you like a piece of this pecan pie? That's right. Well, somebody told me one time it's pecan because a pecan is something people you leave up under the bed in the old days. A pecan. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true, but uh, we call that a pot. So. <laughs> well, how about... I call that a toilet. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> That's right. A little train. Um, well, C A N is what? Uh, can. Right. Okay. The yeah. pecan. Yeah. So. See, Tony Meyer says it's salmon and pecan. That's yeah. right. That's right. All right. Right. And you wonder if some of it ain't the South, too. But well, they, April, sure April added to this. She said, well, how about grocery cart or a buggy? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, here's another one uh, Coke or soda. Oh, or it's pop. Coke. It's Coke. Whether yeah. it's a Pepsi or whether it's a It don't RC, matter if you're drinking a Sprite yeah. or whatever. He's like, I want to go get a Coke. Let's stop yeah. so I can get a Coke. Coke. Yeah. You don't say, hey, stop so I can get a Dr. Pepper. Huh. Right. You just say, hey, stop so I can get a Coke or a Coke, something. Yeah. You know. Right. So, <laughs> Something's got a little burn to it. I think some of it is regional. Um, I do, too. Yeah. Like, I've been watching a uh, Canadian program. And they, I mean, they're pretty much American, but they have some sayings that are different because they say, um, hey, a lot right, uh-huh. you know where we don't you know but you know well you know you enjoy I, the show eh you know yeah. see like <laughs> when we go to the grocery store or something i say hey you gonna get a buggy i mean right it's always I, a that's buggy that's I but i have buggy. to think about it because at times i'll i'll fill in for uh, like the the ladies at front at sam's and it's always like we call them on the radio we have to get the cart guys okay and would you like oh, a cart i mean they use buggy, yeah, yeah they do not yeah. say buggy so i catch myself right. a lot of times well, that's then, like, hey, would you like a cart? You know, that's like the masters. They're so uppity. They don't have fans. They have patrons. Yeah. Oh, right, right. They have right. The patrons. And to me, a patron is like a patron of the arts. Right. You know, you go to the ballet, you're a patron. But I mean, come well, on. that's the same thing in in our field. Or do you, do we have a customer? or Do we have a client? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and that's hairdressing. Yeah. For those you that know. don't know. Well, um, well, it's like this. Is this a show or is it a program? show because right. a lot of people say no it's a program right it's not yeah. a show yeah words are funny right. the way people the way yeah, you and, use and, them uh-huh and what what kind of i always think about is there's a there's a dividing line there's a point where a certain phrase will stop and it's you know you're in the north now or you're in the south uh-huh. you know just it's uh-huh. all about region and you it, can it's usually where the waffle house will stop <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> but april april got in on this one I, at home about it she was like well what is do you call it a rag or do you call it a washcloth? Do you call it a garden hose or do you call it a hose? hose or a hose pipe. pipe. A hose pipe. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, it's always spigot. a hose pipe. Yeah. And you put your mouth on the spigot. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I know oh, forget I, it. I, I'm I'm guilty of not guilty, but just saying I call it both. I might ask for a rag or I might ask for a washcloth. It depends on what comes out yeah, first. Yeah, washcloth you use in the bathtub. Yeah. Um, a rag is something you you wipe. Like a, a dish rag. Yeah, this rag or rag, you know, you might have some poop on your bird poop on your car, and I, I need a rag, you know. I'm not gonna ask for a washcloth to get to it. So. <laughs> it depends on the situation too, sometimes. So that's funny. I've never thought about it like that though. How you, you know? And Tony yeah. says mater or tomato. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, it's how amazing. about this? How Made about this? Sound. This is this is really funny. <laughs> Do you cut the light on or turn the light on? Turn the light on, please. I cut it on. See, right. Yeah, well, we, we, I don't push a button, I mash a button. Uh-huh. You ever heard of that? Yes. Yeah, I, she always gets on to me because I'm always mashing buttons. Yeah, yeah. mash this or you, press that. Yeah, yeah. You'll mash a, mash a button without even reading it. Well, my daddy will say, instead of saying, pull that door closed, he'll say, pull that door too. Uh-huh. 
instead of to me, close always, the door. Yeah, it's right? always, yeah, he always closed it too. Uh, uh-huh. To me, it's always shut the door. Yeah. Pull that door too. That's what he said. Uh, so shut the to door. To me, shut the door. Shut the front door. That's uh, an expression yeah. of <laughs> Which our, one of our bosses at work, he's from Wisconsin, and it took us a little while to get used to some of the things uh-huh. he was saying. All right. And s- instead of saying, uh, we've got three more weeks of summer still he'll say we've got three more weeks of summer yet yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like uh, i had to think okay what's he trying to say here? well i love a person like that trying to use y'all but 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 <laughs> but here's the thing and i don't know the whole english word on that if kathy lemonia was watching i'm sure she would but we never should end a sentence that way anyway you know like say where are you going at or where right. are you going to where it's mm-hmm. just where are you going well something you do a lot that i, I get on to you is did I know it did and done, done and you know I've already done that. She's like we've already did that. <laughs> it's she uses did in my opinion wrong. Oh, my friend Brenda used to get on to me <laughs> all the time with that. I already did that. You already did that. Yeah. You know that's 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 borderline right there. But you use it. Um, uh, or uh, to me because it's like I, I I already I it to me it's like I have already done that. I wouldn't say I've already did that. You, d- you use did in the wrong thing. I know I do all right. the time. Right. Well, we just but. can't think of it right now. But uh, <laughs> when she, she'll she do it eventually. <laughs> and he'll so correct me. Yeah. And I'm like, I am almost 55 years old. Please do not yeah. correct my English. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, certain things you have to use like proper English, in uh-huh. my opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're professional on air. Yeah. We didn't look very professional at the start, I tell you that. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, the start is always... Um, it's always pretty funny because um, I'm always. Uh, we'll give you a little insight to what goes on at the beginning. Usually about five till I start hollering two minutes, two minutes, and everybody laughs. <laughs> yeah, but that's usually when we start sweating because even though we've we've done this almost a hundred shows now, it's still we care so much about this this product that we're producing that yes. um it's, it bothers us even when one little hitch goes into it because I was bothered because I couldn't hear make sure we were on locally um so i had to go out to the car cut the car on and make sure that we were oh, okay we were getting I'm sorry out. if i'd have known that i if right. i would have told you i'm sorry yeah so no it's all good um tony said the viewers are quiet this morning wake up everyone i'm only one commenting no one's commenting oh, okay. well listen we're gonna um we're gonna take a break here in just a second because our special guest is going to be coming into the studio and joining us and she's the one you really want to hear about i want to mm-hmm. hear about her ministry and what yeah. she's doing and all that kind of stuff so i'm excited about that is she already here Bill? yes i and see her call okay i'm gonna run out um, and get her all right so i guess um with our this or that what are some of the things that you say that, th- that can yeah. be used Y'all comment obviously. and tell us uh, comment and let us know <clears throat> yeah. i'll tell you something my um daughter-in-law and them saying everybody and my grandchildren now they'll say hey guys mm-hmm. hey guys and it's to us it's hey y'all and they said it's hanging out or chilling out or it's Uh, different too yeah i mean we use it but we don't use it as much as they do right oh and this is for you let me find it real quick uh joy said when you're in facebook jail you can see but you can't communicate Uh (laughs) oh wow so they don't take the whole product from you yeah (laughs) well that's frustrating that would be frustrating yeah that'd be bad i think i'd just have to stay out of that Cause sometimes but I do love uh, Southern talk. I do too. You know, I love when you run into a good old country folk and they call it Ewans and uh huh. Yeah, and, now, man, I just I love it. My favorite of all the because I've been all over this wonderful great country of ours. My favorite is will always be like the Cajun area, the way they talk. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if y'all remember that that chef that Justin. Uh, yeah, Justin Wilson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just love the way yeah. he done. Well, and Crocodile Hunters, I mean, they were. They were well, good at that that too. makes me think of, um, I don't know if anyone's seen Nat- Nathaniel's uh, Oliveira's video. He's got on Facebook of his daughter. Yeah, that was his little <laughs> daughter. His little daughter, Gabriella, is yeah, in the she, back. She's talking. She's she wants to go to, go to McDonald's. 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 Yeah, McDonald's. And then I love the way she says, Daddy. You yeah. know, that, that yeah. accent. Uh, it is can we go precious. To McDonald's, Daddy. I mean, so if you get a chance, go to. Normal the, Christmas Christian life, and they should have had a video up. Yeah. Um, is, is it on that that web page? It that might be on it? his. Oh, probably, I think it might just be his. on his. But on she's Facebook. cutie. I mean, she's adorable, and she's got glasses on, and she's adjusting her glasses, and she really wants to go to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> it is really uh, cute. So I told him bring her. You know, of course, South yeah. Carolina, we got plenty of McDonald's. Yeah, we got one on every corner. I hey, that, that's true. I'm gonna right. step out and get our special guest. Okay. We're gonna sit up. Um, 
thank y'all for listening. Continue. Yeah, guys, uh, don't Because you don't want to miss the special guests. So. <clears throat> you know, I'm just going to go ahead and play our favorite song, this uh, Ron, Ron Cannoli, Righteousness, Peace, mm-hmm. and Joy in the Holy Ghost. Please, please don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss what Heather has to say. We'll be right back. And we are back. <clears throat> all right. All right. Here we go. We got number four on. I believe I do. I have all of them on. Let me turn five off there. Okay. And we've got to do this real quick. Let me find it. Coming up next, a very, very special guest. All right, we are back. This is your morning manna, and you are listening to 99.9 FM, Williston, Aiken, Augusta, and the whole CSRA. Um, glad to be back. Glad y'all hung out with us. You are listening to 99.9 FM. Who is that? That's not me. Paul. That would be me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all no. turn me on to a video after that break. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, because um, 
That happens pretty much every show, and it's always one of us. One of us us do it, we know. But before we go any further, I want to go ahead and tell those that are watching us on Facebook, please go ahead and help us here and share share this video now. Um, We've got a special guest. We don't want you to miss what she has to say. We're excited about that. So go ahead right there at the bottom, hit the share button so to bring it to the top of your feed, and others can join us uh, this morning on the program. Yeah, and before we left, we did this or that, and it was kind of – uh, the phrases local yeah. national uh, this uh cassie Lovell says ewan's may as well she's like i've heard yeah. it all my life ewan's may, may, as, well. Well. Ewan's so. may as well that's mm-hmm. right that's right yeah mine was um pretty much i heard a lot of slang when i was coming up <laughs> yeah <laughs> well my mother worked out at the uh, there used to be an air force base here in aiken on the outskirts of aiken she ran the base exchange so all the kids that were left out there she would bring home so i got to hear all kind of um countrywide sayings at right a, you the know way my people whole, talk, right. whole life all right uh we're going to go on to special guests our special guest this morning is heather Sargent. now she is um the one responsible for this upcoming event and um it's going to be great because well, go ahead and introduce yourself, Heather, and then we'll, we'll talk yeah, about Yeah, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, good and then morning. we'll get into the event. Okay. Sure, good morning. My name is Heather Sargent, and um, the event that we have coming up is called Faith and Reason. And I have been working with, coordinating with some local churches, but I, I started this, and it's an event that I hope can repeat every year. Amen. But Me too. Basically, it's just it's an apologetics event, but that word is not on the poster or any of the other marketing materials because I just feel like that's a word that scares people. Right. Right. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> a lot of people don't understand what it is. You know, they're like, "What's they apologizing for? Are they apologize being right. a Christian? Are they apologizing?" You know, so because when I first came back to Christ, I didn't understand it either. I didn't know what that was. I had to Google it. So. Well, and I do think it's an area of ministry and different faiths even where a lot of times it seems like it's a forum for arguing. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that. Right. I don't like that. So anyway, I'm hoping that it'll be an event where people can come and learn something that that bolsters their faith in Mm. a real way. Yeah, because the young man is coming. Um, Now, do you, you know his story? I do know his story. Well, go ahead and tell everybody that story because uh, it's it's good. If you were if you were trying to get our audience right now that's watching on Facebook and the mm-hmm. radio, tell them why they should come to your event. Well, and, and about I I will. The main reason is, and I've been listening and following this. I love to follow different Christian apologists, but this guy is kind of he's new on the scene. Um, He's definitely not old, but I don't know if I would say young. He's got grown kids. He's been mm-hmm. an L.A. cold case homicide detective for decades okay um if you google his name his name is jay warner wallace um you could have videos on youtube or on the web pop up from dateline he's been on there a bunch of times okay as a cold case homicide detective but basically his uh story in a nutshell is that in his 30s he just uh, started investigating the claims of Christianity because his wife was interested in it. I don't know if your listeners are familiar with Lee Strobel and the mm-hmm. Case for Christ books right. and that kind of thing. It's a similar story. Um, he just kind of set out to find out what the real deal was with Christianity because his wife was interested in going. Um, and he really used all of his cold case homicide detective skills uh-huh. to investigate it and, and discovered that this is something that's verifiable. Because mm-hmm. yeah, he was pretty much an atheist, you might as well say. He was an atheist. Right, so. um, and vocal atheist. Right. And and I think he was frustrated. He talks about this a lot, about how the Christians he knew, even though maybe he felt like you know this is maybe a good person, but they don't have a lot of evidence. Mm. Mm-hmm. They can't give a very good uh, defense for their right. faith. Um, right. They have a hard time answering questions about other worldviews or how Christianity is positioned in those worldviews. What makes us really different? Mm-hmm. And, um, and usually, when you're when someone questions you mm-hmm. uh, to that degree, if you're ignorant about some things, that's when the anger usually jumps in. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you beg y'all, man, I'm a Christian. You leave me alone, type mm-hmm. deal. So you have a lot of that in the world because we as Christians, we don't. We don't go as far as he did to find out, mm-hmm. you know, well, like Lee Strobel. I mean, he, he jumped in it. 
you know, because he wanted to prove basically that it was wrong and he mm-hmm. couldn't. And he had to accept the faith. Well, he didn't have to, but he accepted the faith. And this guy did the same thing because he was in God's Not Dead. And mm-hmm. as we were watching it, you know, he, he had a little uh, scene in the courtroom. I Googled his name because I, I wanted to see if he was real or if they, you know, just made it up. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> found out he was real. I was like, this is amazing. This is good. So He does great presentations, right. too. And I think the reason why people are going to want to go to AikenFaith.com and get their tickets and make sure they have a place in that auditorium is that he's doing a and a And I think mm. these days, you know, information is so readily available on the Internet. You can Google almost any of his presentations that he gives at churches and things like that. But the opportunity to bring your questions and interact with the speaker. Mm -hmm. That's rare these days. It is rare. And it's also just a great way to to come to that auditorium, hear what he has to say, interact with him about that content, and really stop and think about, especially if you're new to the idea of, you know, one of the things he does talk about a lot is, how a lot of most Christians, if you've grown up in the church like I have, we give self-referencing, self-referencing reasons why we believe what we believe. Mm-hmm. So right. what that would mean is, well, the Bible says, or I was always taught, or it, talk about an experience you had. And Wallace likes to say, you know, that's the same reason a Muslim would say they're a Muslim. Mm-hmm. That's the same reason someone would say that they're a Buddhist or whatever, the experiences they've had or they would refer to that. Is there anything outside of that that would be some evidence? Of course, he refers to it as evidence. That's kind of the background he comes from. But is there any other place we can go to look for, is this really true? Well, Objectively true. How right. can I know if this is true? And I think that's so important now because for people of any age, you know, everything worldwide is available on your glowing pockets where you keep in your <laughs> right. hand all the time, you know, all right. the little information you need is connected to anywhere. Mm-hmm. And there are so many different shifting sands of opinions about what's right, even in within the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely. How do you know where to put your foot? in terms of what's next in your life or how to make a decision or what's really true. You know, what's an opinion and isn't essential to life? What is something that's a core, objectively true thing that you can build your life upon? Mm-hmm. Right, because um, a fellow was talking to me. He's kind of riding the fence right now as far as believing, but he was like, y'all can't get along. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, look at all the different denominations that you have you know one well don't go there or you know no you need to go you know here he's like y'all can't even agree on you know mm-hmm. that and i was like this is the nature of the beast right now so mm-hmm. you know because we're all pretty much pentecostal but i also attend a um a holiness church and i enjoy going to non-denominational churches so i'm i'm the opposite i'm open to as long as it's Bible based, I'm good with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, wow. I do. I would like to see more of a coming together in terms of different people of the Christian faith being able to uh, major on the majors together. Right. You know, Christ came, He died for us. Come here, Warner's talk, where you can learn all about J. Warner Wallace, where you can hear all about, you know, the other sources of historical literature that talk about the event of Christ dying. Exactly. Or maybe they don't say he died to save us from our sins. That's not their version, but there are other verifiable facts out there, you know, that you can go, wow, this really was a historical event. This isn't something we made up. It's not a legend. It really happened It really happened in history. Now what you do with that information that's between you and your maker, whether you're convicted of that as being a life changing right. spiritual truth that saves you from yourself you know right. that's that's a different story but but i would like to see us more come together right. on certain things and not be as divisive we we've tried that here at your morning man and we've gotten i mean from a to z out here and mm-hmm. it's it's worked quite well because you you get to sit down and talk to the individual and find out well there's really no difference just little tiny differences mm-hmm. that make make us different and they're usually the man-made differences right the different views and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so when is this again when 
The event is October 11th. That's a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. It's downtown in Aiken. It's it's what we call the Playhouse. Um, right. The official building is called the AE Com Center for Performing Arts. Okay. But it's right downtown within easy walking distance of a lot of great restaurants. So the way I set it up was it's at 7.30 um, on that Thursday night. And it's a great opportunity to take a, a, a teenage child, a co-worker, mm -hmm. just to go get your own faith built, or your church group, your Bible study group, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or if you have questions. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, because you might have, you know, something could have happened recently that affected your faith, and mm -hmm. this fella give you the the food that you need. Mm -hmm. Go have uh, dinner, right. walk over to the playhouse, yeah, and hear if this you, amazing speaker. If you're old school, Aiken is where the mark one theater used to be <laughs> where you grew up here right yeah, yeah. so well, that's it sounds pretty exciting um so in in his presentation mm -hmm. he gives us just the things that he searched out to prove i'm pretty sure he does like a was, background you know, for him and then he tells you the steps he took to well, when, I, the, do, setting the speaker up has been such an education. Uh -huh. um, and I can give you a little more background about why I set it up. There's kind of an interesting story there. But when I began the process, I reached out to some local churches that have come alongside and supported it. Um, Cedar Creek's been a big supporter. Yeah, I was about to say, give a shout out to the church. Yeah, so you Cedar got Cedar Creek. Cedar Creek has been a huge supporter of this event. I think they really see the value of. Um, promoting mm -hmm. a better understanding more education mm -hmm. in terms of why we believe what we believe and okay. what is a christian worldview and apologetics and all of that kind of stuff so they've really supported it um but you know you when you go to hire a speaker and i didn't know any of this because i've never done it you know you talk to the speaker's agent and then they have a, he has a list of things he can talk about things that he's already developed a presentation about and trying to decide like which of his best-selling christian books are we going to I'm going to have him talk about right. how can we tailor this to Aiken. His first great book was called Cold Case Christianity, and that's his talk um, because he's a cold case homicide detective. So that presentation will be a little bit about mm -hmm. where he was coming from as an atheist, and it combines his story mm -hmm. into what tools did he use and can we use, right. not just to evaluate Christianity, but other worldviews as well. And I'll tell you why that really appealed to me as a foundational uh, place to begin for him to speak. I have a friend in Aiken. I'm crazy about her. She's a wonderful girl. Um, and she's a Christian, too. And mm -hmm. just someone that I'm just a great friend with. But about a year and a half ago, we were uh, we both loved to read books. And we both loved to, you know, stay current with current events and talk about things like that. And she was saying, you know, I found this great devotional that I was thinking about signing up for. It's kind of one of those things that, you know, you can get in your inbox every day and inspire you. And I was like, that sounds good. And she said, do you want to do it with me? It's like a 30 day devotional thing. And I said, sure, send me day one. <laughs> and day one was, it was, um, and if my friend is listening, she's going to go, ah, that was me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was Oprah's 30 day devotional. Oh. Mm. Right. It was a, a devotional with Oprah and Deepak Chopra. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh no. Day one, they had a mantra for each day. Mm -hmm. You know, and one thing I feel like a lot of people, Oprah, any new age person, and a lot of Christianity, versions of Christianity mm -hmm. that are out there, what I feel like one thing they're really good at doing is taking things that are maybe 90% true and then turn in the corner with some 10% lie. And sometimes it's 99.9% .9 true. Right. Right. And there's this 0.1% little lie in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that. And day one's mantra for that devotional series that they had, that inspirational email, was, um, I am my deepest desire. Mm. And I, I texted her. She sent it to me and I texted her back. I texted, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I called her and I said, you know, I think this might be the greatest line I've ever heard as the reason why maybe Christ had to come die for us. Mm -hmm. That I am my deepest desire. Yep. But if you're out there and you're, and you're hearing that and you're thinking, I feel incomplete 
or I don't know which direction to go in my life, mm-hmm. or, or just trying to understand yourself and understand other people and understanding where what you believe fits in with the rest of the world. I mean, we're just hit with so many different questions, so many different viewpoints. Right. People are hungry to, to get some direction. Mm-hmm. Where to put my foot next? How, how do I know what's true? Yeah. Right. And on it, we have a listener, Tony Myers. He said, I saw an article today that stated there was no physical evidence or witnesses that Jesus existed. Um, and that, that's pretty much a lie because um, I'm a history buff and there is evidence, written evidence from back then that, that talks about Jesus. So mm-hmm. I'm glad someone like uh, him is, is traveling the world and, and speaking against that because they don't want they don't want it to be true uh, when i say they i mean the media and um the powers that be you know just, i think it's i think it's exciting and and ever since you stated that in the beginning i was just sitting here thinking you know when people do ask you that about what do you say christ and you know because like you i grew up in church mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think of how would i answer somebody other than i mean i just know I just believe it in my heart. I know that I know. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, like if an atheist um, comes to you and if says, "If they said, well, what me. is your proof?" Right. Well, I mean, I just believe what the Bible says. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. the Bible says it. Christ came and died. I have a personal relationship with Christ, and I know in my heart. But how do I get someone who doesn't believe that? Mm-hmm. To believe. To believe that, or to know that, yeah. mm-hmm. and so that's so interesting. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you know, okay, I know the scripture says that my people perish for lack of knowledge, but if you don't believe the Bible's truth to begin with, it's not going to matter. That's right. If you have the knowledge of what's in the scriptures, it doesn't matter that the word tells us to study and show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, mm-hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you don't believe the Bible, then where do you go from there? Mm-hmm. How do you, you know, you got. A Muslim here or a Buddhist or whatever and you got a Christian here Mm -hmm. how do you present your case for you know this did really happen Mm -hmm. he really did come he was born he died he you you understand what I'm saying a lot of Christians can't even defend themselves against uh, we'll say like Mormon Jehovah Witness you know that type Mm -hmm. um how do you tell them the difference? Right. How do you tell, you know, so I'm, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like very intrigued. I'm sitting here thinking, oh, wow, that's the Thursday we're going to be gone, right? Yeah. You need to have, you have to have an understanding. I mean, whether you can come hear him or not, I just, I'm passionate about, do we know why we believe? Mm-hmm. And also just understanding where other people are coming from. You right, know? exactly. If you follow different Christian apologists that are kind of big on the scene, I don't know if you've heard of Ravi Zacharias. Oh, I love mm-hmm. Ravi Zacharias. He's one of my favorites. And one of the reasons why he's one of my favorites is he's such a smart guy. He's such a great speaker. But he's he's. it's an important point to him to consider the questioner and not just the question. Right. He's, right. And he's very right. kind about it. That's right. So if you think about, you're saying you grew up in the church. Well, what if your neighbor didn't grow up in the church? Right. And how can you love them? And, you know, it is, and I think it's important just for yourself. If you have, are living on the premise that Christianity is the best explanation for a reality in an objectively verifiable way. If that's uh-huh. what you've banked your life on, right. it's important for you to know that that is true. Right. And have reasons that that's true. Right. Not just, I was raised in Sunday school. End of story. I mean, right. you got to know. Right. right. You need to know yeah. for yourself. And so I think that's where uh, speakers and like Jay Warner Wallace come in. You know, uh-huh. people like that, people like Ravi Zacharias, people from different faith traditions from yours, like Tim Keller. Mm-hmm. You know, the book he wrote, Reason for God. Right. He's a Presbyterian minister. The truth of the gospel is the truth of the gospel. Right, right. And it's important to immerse yourself in speakers like this of different mm-hmm. stripes who come at this from different angles. Mm-hmm. But they are all addressing the big questions. And, and Oprah is addressing these questions. And Muslims are addressing these questions. And they're all addressing the big four. Mm -hmm. origin meaning morality and destiny where do i come from why am i here what's the purpose of my life how can i tell right from wrong what happens when you die Mm -hmm. if whether you believe in god or not you got to come up with some answers for that right 
Yeah. You're going to be hopeless. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people who are happy to answer that question for you. Right. And come up with an answer. And how do you know which one is right? Wow. Yeah. Because yeah, this, this gentleman is a cold case detective. Mm -hmm. So he's used to, I mean, really <laughs> big and deep. Yeah, he's so, got to prove facts. Yeah. yeah and I, I mean, because I'm a believer, so it takes very little, you know, to convince me anyway. But to see the amount of time that uh, this gentleman has put in to that wasn't even a Christian. I mean, and then now he is. So that tells you, tells you something, you know, because I believe in faith. You know, I'm faithfully a Christian. I know, I know it was true, and I, I don't care if they find, you know, whatever buried in the sand over in Israel. But some people need that. They need to see the facts and and realize that Jesus was written about. He was, he did exist. He walked everywhere they say he walked. So, mm -hmm. um, can you give a little background on yourself, like your church you attend, and what do you do on the side? And sure. Well, you know, I work. I work as a night shift nurse um, in Augusta, so I work in the NICU, and I work almost every weekend. So it's really hard for me to get to church on Sunday. I don't know who, what nurses are out there, but you sleep during the day. Well, I'm a shift worker, so yeah, I you feel sleep your pain. During the day. Um, I'm a member of All Saints Anglican Church mm -hmm. um, downtown in Aiken, and I love that little church. They sing hymns, and I love the hymns. So that uh -huh. now everybody knows I'm an old church lady. <laughs> <laughs> that I was raised in the church. You got to be raised in the church to like to sing those hymns. But um, I really do love that. But um, I was raised in the Church of Christ, and you know, like a lot of denominations. That can mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. My parents attended a variety of Church of Christ through the years. And the one they go to now, I guess, would be considered like a liberal version. Um, it's a pretty fundamental denomination. Um, and that's part of my background. Um, but as I got older and wanted to know, you know, something that's particular to that denomination when I was growing up is that they don't use instruments in their worship right. service. So I heard That's the first thing that pops in my head yeah. when I hear Church of Christ. Well, as you get older and you start questioning things, and this maybe kind of was the beginning of me wanting to understand why I believe what I believe, what my church believes what they believe. Is this a personal preference or is this something that they're saying is scripturally mandated and how can we know? And, and that was an important thing for me to think about. Asking questions. Asking questions. <laughs> uh -huh. there Bless are, our heart. There are, always, there are always answers out there. Um, but anyway, that's a part of my background. Okay. So, and, and I've just got interested in this because from conversations with friends like my friend who I really admire and respect, who found this, uh, you know, that mm -hmm. devotional or inspirational email format interesting to her, that was appealing to her for some reason. She felt like that was answering some questions for her. And just having three gr grown kids. Right. I have you know, 18, 19, and 23 year olds. Mm -hmm. And anybody with kids mm -hmm. these days knows that from the time they're able to pull stuff up on the phone, right? they're asking questions we never asked. Right. Yeah, because we right. didn't have knowledge about right. everything they have. Right. So that we had to go to encyclopedias to get our knowledge. That's why we yeah. didn't ask. Yeah, what book would that be? <laughs> We're dating, dating ourselves for sure. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, because we. Um, that's pretty interesting. I like the way she said that. And now that you said that, there are a lot of questions and things that you wonder why that are a lot of man-made traditions and a lot of man-made mm -hmm. um, things that the churches follow. And mm -hmm. I say the churches in a broad, you know, mm -hmm. it's like this church does it this way and this does it this way and this does it this way and they don't do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And why? Well, and how essential that is that? Right. You know, I'd like... Again, it's like if it's something that's about personal preference, then I think we don't have to sp spend endless hours exactly. tearing that apart. Right. Uh, go where you prefer the exactly. kind of singing they do. Because I, I told a fellow that I mean, he just can't handle um, like the bands the in the uh, in church. He just can't handle. It. I said, "Well, check out the Church of Christ because they don't have instruments." Mm -hmm. Um, the and church, he did, and he, he loves it. So. The church my parents go to, they live near Nashville, Tennessee. The church they go to is a Church of Christ. It's such a wonderful church. And when I go and visit with them, 
it's a big church. So on Sunday morning, you're hearing 1,200 people right. singing four-part harmony. And you they don't miss an instrument. They, they sing a variety of hymns and more contemporary songs. Um, so that part is a mix, but it is such an amazingly powerful thing to hear that many people right. singing four-part harmony. It's, right. It's great. I love it. It might not be your bag. I don't think Jesus cares about that. Right. I just don't think he cares. But... I love it that they have that option because that really speaks to them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. We should be joyous on Sundays. and hmm. So I don't think you need a band to, to do that. I do. I think, I mean, it would just be like a complete side eddy conversation. But I do think there's there are a lot of conversations in the church at large about does Christian worship look too much like the world the world yeah and someone who's listening who isn't a christian you know that's christian speak looking mm -hmm. like the world that kind of thing yeah, yeah christianese <laughs> exactly but that's 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 a whole other topic yeah, you got that right i was sitting here thinking we could go down all yeah, different yeah, kind of rabbit trails. Trail. yeah for that one for sure bottom line is if you have any questions about um jesus existing or in anything the such as that, that this is what you need to well, go if you, see if you look you know you got the bible it tells you all about jesus and his time here on the earth but you've got others like josephus and others mm -hmm. history historical keepers mm -hmm. who yeah. mention jesus in their right. works right mm -hmm. um but people like ravi zacharias mm -hmm. ray comfort even kurt cameron is he's mm -hmm. kind of like an apologetics guy mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. i mean they are to me the bravest of the brave because if you watch any Ravi's, and he'll go to the campuses and universities, and hardcore atheists come up to him angry a lot of times. Yeah, a lot of them are angry. And he is just so calm mm -hmm. and loving mm -hmm. in his responses. And you leave, you know, shaking your head like, man, I've, how do I not? I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking, how do I not know that? Right. right. His response. Mm -hmm. He's just, he's so deep. Uh huh. And, but yeah, so I'm interested in. Well, my, hearing more about this guy. Too. I have my middle child is at Clemson. He's 19. And when he was nine, we went to hear Ravi Zacharias at Clemson speak. Mm. And uh, he wanted to go. It, it was fabulous. And, you know, you can hear tons of Ravi Zacharias. You can read his books. You can see him all over YouTube. It was so different. Sitting wow. in an audience of 9,000 people, students mostly, and they had microphones set up. He gave his talk. And then to have, there was a, a really angry sounding Muslim student that stood up and I can see where he's coming from. You know, um, if, if you believe Christianity is true, and this would be the same if you believe the Muslim faith is true, you believe other things are false and that's offensive to people. Um, but for this guy to get up and, and Ravi gave him time to be angry, to say everything he wanted to say, and then he's just set this great example of acknowledging it's very brave for you to come up and ask this question i really appreciate you asking this question um i'd like to be sensitive to where you're coming from that kind of thing what a great thing to witness in person right. yeah, right. love mixed with right. the truth and if you yeah if you get to looking into ravi's he's got like a whole crowd of apologetic people that he's mm -hmm. raised up and they're mm -hmm. on his staff Mm -hmm. A lot of them are former Muslims and mm -hmm. Buddhist and all sorts of different mm -hmm. that, that they found the true true way of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Ravi had a lot to you know do with that, getting their nurturing them into there. And uh, because a lot of times Christians will tell you, well, it's the truth. <clears throat> well, how do you know it's the truth? Because mm -hmm. it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't have an answer. So they get, you know. Well, so that's what's different about J. Warner Wallace. You know, Ravi and tim keller and people like that they're presenting the truth they're presenting it in different ways they're they're helping you think about things in new ways um what i like about the particular aspect of j warner wallace's ministry is he wants to help people learn how to be good thinkers themselves right mm -hmm. you know he wants to make everyone there uh, an apologist you know mm -hmm. how can you reason this out and he uses those cold case detective skills you know i think he kind of begins with when i walk into a a, hum, a death mm -hmm. how do i know it isn't a suicide 
How do I know it isn't a murder? How do I know it isn't a death of natural causes? How do I reason that out? And it may seem like a stretch, but it really isn't. You know, he's looking at the facts. What details of the scene can I use to, right. to decide mm -hmm. what kind of a death is this? And that's what he talks about, you know, and how he used those skills and we can use those skills. Mm -hmm. That's different than what someone like Ravi Zacharias does. He's wonderful about presenting things to think about that are true about the Christian faith that we believe are true, that he believes are true and that someone else can think about. Jay Warner Wallace is like, I do believe this is true. But what I'm going to tell you is, how can you learn to evaluate this for yourself? Right. And I mm -hmm. think that's, with all the information that comes at us these days, I think that's an essential skill. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That sounds like it's going to be really good. Okay, tell, mm -hmm. tell our listeners again um, when it's going to be, the time, and all of that kind of stuff, and how they can get a ticket. Mm -hmm. It's the event. I, I gave the event a name. The event is called Faith and Reason. If you drive by the AECOM Center for Performing Arts, you'll see it up on the big marquee, and there's a poster outside. I did that because I'm hoping this can be a repeatable event. Okay. Oh, it's going to be. Yeah, I, I want it to be a repeatable event. I want to bring different speakers in. This year, the, the first year we're doing this, the speaker I chose is named J. Warner Wallace. Mm -hmm. um, you can learn more about him at his website, coldcasechristianity.com. You can also just Google J. Warner Wallace and unbelievable amounts of information right. will come a up. Whole it's, a, lot. it's a huge web presence. But the event is on October 11th. That's a Thursday night. It's at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And he's going to give a presentation about Cold Case Christianity. Then there's going to be a period of question and answering that people from the audience can step up to the mic and ask him a question and he'll engage the audience and he'll be around in the lobby afterwards too to meet and talk to people so a great opportunity to take some time out of your week to go hear this wonderful speaker to bring your questions someone else's questions and take a little time to focus on learning a little bit more about what we believe is that sounds so yeah, amazing i'm just sitting here thinking we'll be driving back from ohio that thursday and i'm thinking is there any way possible that we can get back in time for that? I would love to. Well, people can go to, to the to website that. I set up for Faith and Reason, and that website is called AkinFaith.com. It takes you straight to the ticketing site. Okay. You can buy your tickets. One of the reasons why I chose the Performing Arts Center instead of, say, asking a church to host it is that I want people Neutral who are. Ground. I want people who are familiar. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Um, if someone's got a friend that they've been talking to and they're kind of on the fence, mm -hmm. um, you know, they can buy two tickets and bring their friend and they can say, let's go get a pizza mm -hmm. and then we're going to walk over or any right. of the other amazing places that right. you can eat right. around town and walk over there. I, one of my uh, friends has a middle school <clears throat> son who she had mentioned to me a couple of months ago that he came up to her one day and said, how do we even know this is real? How do we even know this is true? Where those questions came for him, as a parent, she feels the need to yeah. point him to places where he can learn how to evaluate that and uh -huh. get answers. Uh -huh. She's bringing him to the event. I know lots of friends who just enjoy apologetics like I do. Right. And I uh, can't wait to hear him speak in person because he's a wonderful speaker. He did real good in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, well, like I said, I Googled him right then, so mm -hmm. I was impressed. I was like, ooh. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. going to be an exciting time here in Aiken. I'm excited about yeah. that. Um, let's plan on, uh, like next year, maybe having it on a Monday evening, and you can bring him, <laughs> you can bring the speaker in Monday morning. So, Well, I'd um, like you to get him at all. He is coming into Aiken to do this event for us, and then he's going to be the headline speaker and closer at the um, SES Apologetics Conference in Charlotte. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, he's got interesting things to get onto yeah. after our event, and yeah, I know anybody going to that is going to really be yeah, blessed I think by it's, that. I think it's great when you can, you can grab people like that because mm -hmm. we've we've had a time of grabbing people and got lucky and you yeah. know mm -hmm. people so have grabbed us we so them, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. we know the heartache because i've gotten a lot of uh well i, I haven't gotten a lot of email replies mm -hmm. you know asking people to come in well, we keep in this trying area. That's oh yeah right. we keep oh i'm trying. never gonna stop trying well, well we're, we're excited go ahead paul well looking at ticket prices they're not bad uh -huh. and if, especially mm -hmm. if you go two or more get right. the uh 
the special ticket for group ticket special. So, okay. and for the uh, for the Christians out there wondering why you had to pay, <laughs> uh, she's got to rent this facility. Mm-hmm. And the facility is not free. So, you, and that's right. Well, and, bringing the speaker in is yeah, right. So. He's worth to, every penny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's worth well, even if he doesn't but, charge, you still have to um, motel still room food. Occur, yeah, right. right. Mm-hmm. So there's there's just stuff you have to do to well, uh, get these wonderful people in. So. Well, you know, if you're if you enjoy or are willing to go spend twenty dollars to b- pay a ticket to go to the movies and pay for the ridiculously priced yeah. <laughs> refreshments yes. there, mm. you know, it's about the same cost as right. that. But right. it would be something that could really change your life, change people's yeah. lives. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I didn't think the price was. I'm bad excited about night. that. So uh, we will be sure. Normally, April is here to do all this typing and get the event in. But I will get Tony, all the information. Tony's been helping us. Has he? Thank yeah. you, Tony. But I want to put her actual event in our thread and mm-hmm. put the date. Well, it's on and, your morning manner too. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's all there. Uh, so I encourage you to go out and do that. And um, we really thank you for taking your time, especially because you need to sleep and you've oh, got to work and all that kind of stuff. Coming um, all the way out what, here. What hospital do you work in? I work at university. Well, my do- mm-hmm. well, our daughter is in labor and delivery. She's there, a nurse so. there at labor delivery. She mm-hmm. is. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's tall. Uh, well, she looks just like me, so she's gorgeous. But uh, <laughs> tall. So she has a beard. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> It's a great place to work. Let me tell you something. Those women in the NICU, I'm not as familiar with other units. You know, we're sort of a closed unit. Right. But uh, some of the most amazing women I have ever met in my life. And I guess they just, you know, we're in the trenches mm-hmm. together in this closed unit um, with fragile lives in our hands. Yes. And it is just the most amazing place and the, to work. The cool thing is when um, she's a nurse in labor and delivery now, but when she was born, she was in NICU. Was so, she? Yeah, yeah, she inhaled the, was it, ambiotic fluid? Yeah. 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 But that's, that's so scary. exciting. Yeah, it was scary for me. Mm-hmm. Um, Get the privilege to work with all them little babies. I know. And those They're lives. so yes. sweet. Yes. They're so sweet. Good stuff. Uh, you also have a side uh, gig, too. What is that? <laughs> well, I'm a local photographer, but you know, um, and I really do, I would still do both, but I started going back to school for nursing when my oldest child went off to Clemson. Okay. Um, It was just something that I wanted to do to take kind of a left turn and try Mm -hmm. something different because I knew that someday they would all go. Mm -hmm. And all of my clients are regional, my photography clients, you know, are in this area. And I thought, well, you know, I'm from Middle Tennessee if I ever want to go somewhere else. And I just thought it would be fun to to do something different. Photography is great and I really love it, but it it gave me the opportunity as a single mom to be able to be very flexible and to stay Mm -hmm. home with them. Right, right. but as they've gotten older, who knows what the next chapter will be. That's right. You know, who okay, knows? now tell them your business, name of it. it. Heather Sargent Photography is the photography business that okay. I have. And I've been doing that a lot longer. I've been a professional photographer for 16 years. Okay. Um, and that's something that I really love to do and still do. And a lot of my portrait clients don't even know that I work as a nurse. But that's the nursing is more recent. In my life, that is something that you know. As that first child fled the nest, I thought, "Gosh, these people are going to leave." And <clears> do I want to stay here and do photography here forever? You know, I just I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So right. I thought, "Let's try this," and it was, I love it. It was it's funny because I'm the I'm the stalker for your morning man. I do the um, I'll do the advertisements <laughs> of special guests on Sundays. So I went to your Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scrolling. I was like. It was all your pictures of other people. I I'm like, and, he, and here's the thing that's so funny is that had April been here this morning, because she's normally one that sets up our Facebook feed and stuff right. for us, she would have had your picture up. For, we would have emailed the picture of the name and the event and oh, all of that yeah. stuff. And um, you got stuck with me this morning. Right. So oh, no, that's okay. You shared it <laughs> yeah. yesterday. Yeah. But it would have been up on our feed and stuff like that. So I just wanted you to know she's normally really good about getting that oh, stuff that's okay. up. Everybody's yeah. got a cell phone or an iPad right. or uh-huh. something. They can stop where they are and type in aikenfaith.com. It lands right yeah. on the ticketing page. You pop your credit card in and mm-hmm. save your space. And one thing I think it's important to say is this is people are interested in this. Mm-hmm. Tickets are selling. 
there are 300 seats available. I, I want people to get on there. If they want to go, don't wait. Gotta, right. This is a couple of weeks it. away. They need to get right. online and they need to get their ticket. Well, Save I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's going to be a um, yearly thing. Yeah. So um, please don't hesitate calling us on the next one because I know it's coming. So. I know. And I'm excited for those of you out there that are have questions, uh, want answers, or just interested in apologetics and coming at it from a different view. We encourage you to go and listen to this. And if you ever have something on your heart that you need to, you feel someone needs to hear, I mean, holler at us. Yeah, let us know always. Yeah. You're always welcome to come back and, we'll do. and yeah. share. Thank we you for having We love promoting local me. people. Yes. Um, um, it's been exciting. So I guess we'll take a break real quick and yep. come back and um, – We'll get to our word of the day uh, and stuff like that. Two things. Uh, Amanda is watching and Kyle is watching. He says, good morning, y'all. Sorry I'm late. Oh, you good, brother. <laughs> good morning. That's, good our, good morning. that's our son and daughter-in-law, and they live in Indiana. So. Yeah, so I'm good watching. morning. Thanks for joining us. We got uh, Allison Boggs watching us, too. Good morning, good Allison. Morning, Allison. And coming up, we'll have uh, the word of the day and Mania Minute. So y'all, yeah. please stay with us. Yeah, we'll y'all want to see this Mania Minute right this morning. Back. This is going to be kind of funny. Uh, so anyway, take a couple minute break. We love y'all. Thank y'all for listening. We'll Stay back. with us. Don't go anywhere.
Hey guys, sorry, we are back. Paul, here's the... Man, oh man, that song went quick. So we are back in the studio and we're excited. Uh, we're going to be coming up with our word of the day. Let me get these other mics on going here. There we go, Paul. Join me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I heard it get quiet. I was like, what? I know. I was like, oh, where'd the song go? So we are back and sorry for that delay. Um, what an awesome segment that oh, was. Man, I'm that so was excited great, mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, we'll have and to look him up on YouTube. Yeah, definitely encourage you to uh, look this gentleman up. And I love the name of his book. What was that? Um, uh, cold Case Christianity. Christianity. Mm -hmm. He's a real life homicide, cold case homicide mm -hmm. detective from Los Angeles. Yeah. So he brings that into. He's probably a busy man. Yeah, wow. And into. Um, searching out and finding out how you can explain and that intrigued me when she said that paul how do you explain to others why you believe what you believe yeah, yeah. i mean it's easy for us to say well i was raised that way or mm -hmm. i believe you know yeah. and, but how and do the, you the point i got from the whole thing was explaining to somebody that why you believe what you believe just because something happened to you that doesn't prove that god is real or jesus right. walked on this earth or that's just right. something that you experienced. Right. Right. That was a personal, exactly. you know, because I have a personal relationship with Christ and I believe that way. Right. But why do I believe? How do you tell somebody right. that says there is no God or mm -hmm. there's other gods? But, yeah. you know, what makes your God different? Exactly. Type thing. So, man, that's going to be yep. it's going to be an awesome thing. So, yep. so Once again, uh, October 11th at mm -hmm. 730 to 9 at the Playhouse in downtown Aikens. That's going to be a great thing. Exciting time. Um, let me turn this one off here. We go. So anyway, I'm excited. We've got coming up our word of the day, which is always a fun it is. little it is. thing that we're going to do. And I um, want to do a few shout outs here on Facebook for a minute while we're waiting on Bill to get back into the studio. Uh, Zach Heron, good morning, Zach. Good morning, Gary Zach. Sullivan. Good morning, Gary. Donna King. Audrey Rivera. Good morning, Audrey and Donna. And Drew Sarah was tuned in as well still may be and allison said good morning y'all yes. one of them good old southern terms one we them were talking worms, about. that's right y'all you and yeah you guys <laughs> all that kind of stuff that's funny but anyway okay so um paul you want to go in there and tell bill it's time for word well, of the day he should be he, oh okay he's on his way he's back coming right. back through <laughs> here right now so Ah, uh, Drew uh, Sarah, good morning, y'all. I saw Bill had his hat on. That's right, Drew. He's got his, his hat on this morning. <laughs> yeah, he loves those hats. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> he's, while he's working his way back into the studio, um, <laughs> ooh, ooh, we got it? Yeah. All right, all right. So we're going to do our word of the day now, y'all. So let me get our little opening oh, here. A, let me get a pen. I'll be right back. All right, get you a pen. Do, 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 do. Do you know what time it is? Shabu. A dust. Jabberwocky. Hibberty jibbert. Bartley. Blather sky. Kerfuffle. Manuka. Word of the day. <laughs> 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 what is it at the end? It's time for Word of there the Day. There it is. Yay. 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 I miss her. Yeah. <laughs> I miss her when she's not here, too, for sure. Okay, guys, so here is our word. Now, first thing you know, those of you out there that are watching on Facebook or listening on the radio, the only rule is that you can't Google it. Right, no okay? Googling. No Googling. So we're going to try to spell it first, and then we're going to give our definitions of it, okay? So you can increase your vocabulary today. Uh, All right? we, can I give shout-outs before? Uh, you can. We've just done that, but you go ahead. Okay, uh, Gary Sullivan, good morning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Audrey Rivera. Yep. Zach Heron is watching. Hey, yeah, Zach. Hey, Zach. Zach's going to be a, a daddy. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Zach. Zach's a good guy. Yeah, yes, he he's is. a good kid. And he's lucky. If you've ever, you've never seen that video of Zach scoring. Yeah, the, the oh, half yeah. Yes. I, I knew, I said, uh oh, they done picked the wrong person right there because I knew he was going to do it. But um, Drew Sarah says, Good morning, y'all. I see Bill has his hat on. Uh -huh. You got that right, girl. That was good seeing them the other night. Too. Yeah, really it was good it. seeing them. Okay. Uh, Okay, right, go ahead. Word of the day. <clears throat> so our word of today is mm -hmm. empasm. Empasm. Okay. Empasm. I feel good about this one. You feel good about mm -hmm. it? Is All it right. a noun or do you know? Um. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yes. 
M. Pisum. Who's got the spelling? Who wants to go first on the I'll spelling? Go first. Okay. This is probably, if I've got it wrong, this is probably it right here, but the first letter. I got I M P A S S U M. Okay, that's wrong. It's uh, Impasm. Impasm. Um, uh, um, on, um. Impasm. Okay, I'm just, just gonna take leave a guess. It. Bill. I'm okay. Gonna spell it like possum, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with E M P A S S I M. No. Uh, okay, you were closer though. Uh, the, the correct <laughs> the correct spelling of this word is E M P A S M. Okay. E M P A S M. Impasm. Impasm. Okay. So now it's time to bring our definition in. Well, the reason why I spelled it with two S's is because I was, you know, going to use like for car. Hey, Donna King spelled it just like I did. Just in passing. Just, oh, and Tony yeah. says well, we I am P-A-Z-U-M, a type of car. Yeah, because I was in passing them on the side, on the left-hand side. <laughs> hey, Joey <laughs> says I'm out. He doesn't know. Come um, on, guys. I know it was an E-M, so, so cause I was what, thinking about in, in is a word is a word in past I can't I'm, it's Monday y'all okay That's right. All uh, right. definition go ahead Paul <laughs> definition well the way I spelled it mm -hmm. the way I thought it was going to be spelt spelt S-P-E-L-T that's how I say spelt okay <laughs> spelt it's okay. your world <laughs> that's right and then I, I looking at it and thinking about the country folk that we are mm -hmm. I thought I spelled it as I'm pasm so like to pass someone on the road Okay. Right. To pass, so an empasm is to pass someone on the yeah. road. Okay. I see. I put it in a plural sense. M meaning yeah. us. Yeah. M gonna pass them on the left. <laughs> but um, well, we went country with that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. uh, didn't go over um, I'm gonna say it is when you you just don't care. I'm not in pasm about that subject. Okay, so. Um, and I'm just, uh, I don't have anything really, but I'm going to say I don't care. It's when you don't care about the subject and you don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You're neutral. Yeah, you're, so you kind of, you know. You're at an impasse. Eh, yeah. Oh, an impasse. That's impasse, really that's what I was looking yeah, at, impasse. Okay. So, hmm. impasm is that with some M in it. The state, of being, yeah. the state of being. Okay. All right. And the mental state of being. And it also affects your physical state. So mm. you're doing both of those at the same time. Like oh. when you break out in a cold sweat when someone says something to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the act of impassing. <laughs> when you break out in cold sweat. That's okay. what when you break out okay. in cold sweat. Well, let me tell y'all, y'all are really going to uh, enjoy this definition because neither one of you are even anywhere close. Well, I did. Um, we never believe are. that. Yeah. Well, no, sometimes you are, but you know. Okay, so empasm is a perfumed mm. powder sprinkled on the body to mask the odor of sweating. Wow. So deodorant, pretty much. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, my mother used to wear that. She used that. Perfume powder. I call it old women powder. Because <laughs> yeah, I'd buy. I mean, I'd buy some nice. Um, almost said aftershave, but I'd buy some nice perfume. Um, some of that eau de toilette, you know that stuff. <laughs> and um, she always wanted perfume powder. I like she, what Donna said. She said, "Wow, Bill, you did the whole dictionary." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I guess if you see, like, if you watch some of the older, like, some of the movies where. It's like in the Victorian age, and you see the women, right. they would dust their, uh -huh. their yeah, dust chest. The, right, right. right. Yeah. So, empasm is a perfume mm -hmm. powder sprinkled on the body to mask the odor of sweating. You know, because that, that, that doesn't sound French, I don't guess. I guess it would be, because, I mean, they invented all that stuff. Yeah. The little Johnson & Johnson. Yeah, right. Baby powder. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, I don't think it would be, like, more perfume. So, see, we they don't. still sell it. Yeah. Scent to it. So, you and know. A baby butt scent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby powder, yeah, right. But anyway, that is our word for today. So you have learned something. Yeah. So, so that's in PASM. To the list. In PASM. Um, we, I guess we need to put the proper spelling on that. E M P A S M. E M P A S. And it's powdered perfume. No, perfume. Powdered. 
A perfumed powder. Yeah, perfumed sprinkled powder. Sprinkled on the body to mask the odor of sweating. And while we're here at the word of the day, guys, let me just go ahead and put in a plug for our 100th show. That yes, is y'all please listen. Today. Listen. Um, we need you to take at least five of our words from word of the day. Make up some kind of story, some kind of. Uh, it can be uh, written, do a video. I prefer a, a video. Yeah, video or written will be fine, either one, because we're going to pick out of all of those on our 100th a episode. Winner. We've got a winner, and they're going to get this nice, nice $100 basket. And it'll be a chicken dinner. I'll tell you that right now. Winner, winner, chicken dinner yeah. uh, from the show. So, um, And please, y'all, we uh, Tony Myers jumped on it immediately. I mean, immediately. And, you yeah, know, double entry. Right, mm-hmm. so I mean, we love Tony, but Tony should have some competition. That's right. In a period. So, um, okay, Donna says more like a Estee Lauder type powder. <laughs> right, Donna. Right. That's right. <laughs> I uh, welcome Andrea Turner, all the hey. way from Pensacola. Good morning, Andy. In. Yes. Love Andy and uh, Jeff and Susan Jones are watching. So welcome them into our viewership. Uh, right. The word of the day was empasm, and for those that didn't know it's perfume powder to mask odor um and donna king says it's more like a estee lauder type powder so that's uh thank you for that donna yes and uh i guess you can buy it at belks if you want um so. i'm assuming so yep so let's go get some empasm <laughs> and now if you go to belks or <clears throat> dillard's anywhere that sells perfume powder perfume no powder perfume Anyway, um, go there and tell them you would like to purchase some Empasm and see what they do. (laughs) Now, if you could film that, I'm going to tell you right now, you've already won the 100 (laughs) 100 show giveaway. (laughs) Yeah, if you go to Belts, if you go to Belts, film that and ask them for Empasm. Do y'all um, sell Empasm here? Yeah. <laughs> They shake their head and be like, no. Nah. Oh, oh, that just, would be an awesome check video. Yeah, that yeah. would be awesome. But please go to our page. get Pick five of the word of the days. Do a short video. And listen, what they need to know is that it does not have to be used in the correct context of the definition. Exactly. Cause I'm just, on, just make up the story to sound good. Yeah, on our 100th show, I will have a story written with our word of the day. Oh, that should be interesting. Yes. Yeah, so you um, can't win the basket. Though. Well, I've already got no. One. I've already got one of my words that I'm going to use with this word. All right. And I'll tell you right now. Ready. I'll tell you right now. My story is going to be a sad story. It's going to be a sad story. It's going to be a sad story. It's not going to be joyful, unfortunately, but it's going to be a very, very sad. Oh goodness, story. Lord! <laughs> Heartbreaking. Sadly written. Uh, no, no, it's going to be written well, but it's going to be sad. The oh, subject okay. matter. Uh, Michael Burden says, praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning, Mike. Hey, Tony Myers says it was 10, not 5. Tony, you are so right. It was 10, but we have had to bring that down because people seem to be having a hard time with 10 of them. Yeah. I mean, it seems easy to me. We can't even do me, one. So. But, you know, um, so anywhere between 5 and 10, please use the words. And it's going to be a value package of over $100. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's a 100th show. We're going over a hundred dollars we're simply. so excited about it too uh you're not gonna want to miss it uh drew sir and possum <laughs> a little rodent searching through the trash and shannon's afraid of <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one yeah, we talked about this the other night I think hey tony possums. hey tony myers listen sorry <laughs> he's cr- he's crying foul now because we done but you've done such a good job we could have said two words or 20 words and yeah. you still would have done a great job on that video so we might let you come on the show one day tony that's just right. Just for going extra credit. Just doing that extra credit. That's exactly right. He uh, Just let Bill know ahead of time that we can get out of town. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, well, that's just, I don't want to embarrass him. He's got that, you know, Camaro. And, oh, here we go. Okay. You know, let's move him right along. We're yeah, running out of along. time. We've got our Speak Life segment. Here you go, Paul. <laughs> Talking about vertigo. I, know, I that love that one. Mess your ear up a little oh, yeah. bit. Uh, well, I'm just going to do very, very quickly. I had spoke to the church uh, last week about commitment. We were doing child dedications, and the mm-hmm. Lord just spoke mm-hmm. to me about how serious that is to me, and I believe to God, it's just as serious as a marriage covenant. You come in a covenant with your child. Hey, I've committed you to the Lord. I used uh, the story of Hannah and her dedicating Samuel to the Lord. She left him there mm-hmm. to minister to the Lord. And uh, 
So I was just thinking about commitment. What's it look like in the believer's life? And uh, Psalms 37, 3 and through 7, David writes, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Some, some scriptures say, be fed faithfulness. Uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him <clears throat> who prospers in his way. Um, so what look, What does commitment look like? Commitment looks like resting. Commitment looks like trusting. And commitment looks like committing your way to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's in every circumstance in life. In the good and the bad, trust and commit. Know that the Lord's going to do what he says he's going to do. Right. Know that the Lord is going to be faithful to the promises that he's promised. Whether it be in his word, whether it be in your quiet time with the Lord and the Holy Spirit speaks to you and promises you something, mm -hmm. or whether it be that you've received a word, a prophetic word from the Lord through someone else, you know, there's times that people may speak things in your life and you just know, okay, that's not of the Lord. Right. So, but there's times that you know, okay, that is of the Lord. Right. And you don't see those things come to come forth right then. And sometimes we may think, well, have second thoughts on those things. But what I love is... <clears throat> This psalm is written by David, and we all know David's life. David loved the Lord, but he had some, had crazy, some issues. Oh, he right. had some crazy issues. His sons tried to kill him. He uh, he was an adulterer, and all these things. But I love that David uh, he he wrote this psalm in his later life. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, proof right here in Psalms thirty seven twenty five. David said, "I have been young, and now I am old." Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. I love this right here. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are, are a blessing. Mm. And I love it because David knew, okay, I've committed my life to the Lord. I've committed my ways to mm -hmm. the Lord. I was anointed king in, the, in front of my brothers, in front of everybody. But what did David do? He went straight back out to tending sheep. He knew from that moment that God was true to his word. He didn't mm -hmm. have to seek it. He didn't have to work his way any, 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 into anything. Or he didn't have to work his way into the king's palace. The king called upon him. You know, here's the thing, Paul, and I love that when you say that. David was anointed king as a shepherd boy. Yes. And he had to wait many, many, many years before yeah. that actually came to fruition. Yeah. And through his life as the king, he done a lot of things that you you have to think wow yeah. you know why is da you know the bible's written david this and david that <clears throat> and um i think of it like david when he when he slew the giant goliath i mean just in faith believing what god's word mm -hmm. said and, and done but then he also as he became king he committed adultery with delilah and then you wonder why the scripture says but he was a man after god's own heart yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so to me that says that the heart is where God looks. Mm -hmm. He called David as a young shepherd boy because he knew David's heart. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, well, he that's, knew, you know. and that's one thing else about David when he committed uh, that sin with Bathsheba. And the, and what did the, I say, Delilah? I meant Bathsheba. <laughs> sorry, y'all. almost said Samson. I know Samson. I'm <laughs> thinking, the, yeah, sorry. And the, and the penalty of that was he lost that child. And the Bible says that he, he was pretty much in mourning. Right. over that time but when he found out that the baby died the, the bible speaks that he gets up and he just goes on about his business he went on to committing and knowing that god's going to see me through right he, he had repented before the lord he was always repentant of his uh -huh. way that's the thing. he was fully committed that god is going to god is going to um, forgive god is going to push me forward in this and there's always going to be something good on the other side of this mm -hmm. all day long he is gracious david yes says. all day long and uh, he was human he, Absolutely. I mean, he wasn't perfect. No. Um, no. Even after you're called, you you yeah. still have relapses. So. Well, he came with a repentant heart, and, and right. it tells us all through the Psalms we talks and about he's he's key. close to those who are, are repentant, contrite heart. Right. Those who are it's he knows you, God uh, knows. It's when right. you do wrong, and you just keep it doesn't bother you at all. That's yeah. that's the difference. David yeah. uh, truly repented. Mm -hmm. So, and that's and, and <clears throat> just trying to wrap this up. That way, we got some time for mania minute but that's what i tried to uh, get to the church was that 
what does commitment look like? Commitment is just a, a full on total commitment that God is going to do what God says Amen. he's going to do. Mm-hmm. And whether life looks, I mean, life looked horrible to David at that time. Could you imagine the shame that he felt when right. the prophet Nathan came to him and right. told him that and you then he are the, one. the child? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He probably thought, man, I'll never see the throne. But on the other side of that, his mind was thinking, no, God said I'll see the throne. Right. Right. You know, well, you know, he was already king then, but, but you know what I'm saying? That, that, yeah. that, that, that I'll never, whatever, as a king, I'll never be a great king. But yet he was. Yes. And yet his commitment to, to God even was shown in how he could have killed Saul. Mm-hmm. I'll, but he wouldn't touch the king. Right. You know, right. his commitment to God was that, hey, he'll, he'll be a man of integrity. And yes. his commitment to Saul was, I'm committed to you, Saul. Mm-hmm. Even though Saul wasn't committed to him. Saul right. was jealous. So uh, commitment and knowing and trusting what God's going to do for you. So if there's somebody out there listening today that needs to know and trust that when God has called you, um, God will follow through on those promises. Amen. Absolutely. And he's telling you to trust him and not to forgive up because he's able to do abundantly above all that you think or right. ask mm-hmm. and, and knowing in your heart. And, but you know, the thing about David was that it was a true repentant heart. Yes. Amen. Yes, Amen. and that's what God looks for. So anyway, what awesome. a great speak life. Yeah. Yes, good. Our um, commitment. Uh, Christy Frixell, dear friend of ours out in Texas. She's uh, I can't read it all, but she says she's had a migraine for almost a. I'm hoping a, a, a day, but it's probably a week. But anyway, we're gonna pray for you, uh, Christy. To yes, that migraine get on out your head, girl. Amen. I'm trying to finish the rest of it. What is it, uh, Drew Sarah saying know, about Paul? It's From antenna. this angle, the antenna behind I mean, look at sure Paul's head right there. I mean, look. Paul looks like a, a dunce hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, that's yeah. funny. That's funny. I don't know why it won't let you read the rest of the comments. It finally it, it does will. If, you, if you click on it, I think. Or no, something. It's, it will after the program. Oh, okay. It won't let you see more until it's oh, over. Oh, that's funny. But anyway. Okay, guys, so we just got we got a um, really quick mania minute this morning. Yeah, I didn't realize what time it was. I yeah. was thinking we still had a good yeah, 30 minutes. Yeah. I didn't speak life so fast. It seemed like I felt like an auctioneer <laughs> trying to get, just trying to get it out so we can have time. But we do want to encourage that because, you know, I think one of the most important part of our programs every Monday or our show is that um, we do speak life into right. someone's because somebody's listening that needs to hear that God loves them yeah, exactly. and that. He is faithful. If we will just turn to him, he will He will because do what, what he says he's going to do. I mean, we have fun, but we do share the word, every yes. program. Um, that's our that's our one rule that we always follow. We begin in prayer, and we always um, speak life. So, uh, uh, Donna, when I say it's going to be a sad story, it's going to be a happy sad, because you got sad, sad, and you got happy sad. It's going to okay. be a happy sad story. So A happy sad story. Yeah. Boy, that's an oxymoron if yeah. I ever heard. Right. It's going to be sad but joyful at the same time. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Um, okay, go ahead. You ready? Okay, so our mania minute today, guys. I, I thought, I, I hate that April's missing this because I love, uh, and I'm going to do this with y'all because I think it's going to be funny to see how far we can get. Um, I'm going to start the timer because we're going to have one full minute, but I need you to flip your papers over and get ready. Mm-kay. Okay. And this is what I want you to do. If y'all are out there listening and you want to try it, I thought it'd be interesting just to see if, uh, how far we could do this, how our brain works. Okay, for, so for one minute, I want when it starts, and um, I want you to write as much as you can of the alphabet backwards. Hold on. No, nope, sorry. Sorry, guys. Wrong one. I don't know what happened to my program here. I think I clicked off of it. Hold on. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> oh, here we go. That's going to be very... Now, can I write it out forward and then back? Nope. <laughs> go. Well, well, ladies my... and gentlemen, boys and uh, girls. Wait a minute. Honey. All ages. Y'all. Coming up next, your Mania Minute. I'm trying to look for my time here. It's like I have completely lost it on the, on the um, thing. Here we go. Game show music. Here Thank we go. You.
Stop. Put your pen down. Okay. Wow. <laughs> You know what? I got to go and I'm thinking, boy, I am so smart. And I got to write and I'm like, no, that is totally wrong. (laughs) Okay, so um, let's see. Here we go. Who wants to go first? I will. I was doing uh, beginning and end because I can remember those. Okay. At the ending, I got Z Y W V U T S R Q. Uh, The beginning, J I H G F E D C B A. Okay, I'm totally confused on that. You so went we're going. We're going to go in the begin. Uh, we're going to yeah, go the in the middle. I didn't do. I didn't get to the middle. Okay. Oh, I thought you said J. Okay. Yeah, All J. Right. That's where I stopped. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was doing it in phases. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, Drew, Sarah, no, that does not count. He said I wrote the whole alphabet out and turned the paper upside down. Does that count? <laughs> oh, you'd have to put it in a mirror to be backwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Paul, so tell me what you got. I've got Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G E F. Good for you. You got a little further. I stopped at J. I got it all the way through to J, but it took a minute for yeah. you to think of that. I know it. Yeah. Oh. Backwards. So okay. so can I ask y'all what technique did y'all use to do that? How did y'all do that? I split it. I started with the end, and then when I couldn't go no more, I started with the beginning. <laughs> I just would say the alphabet forward, and then when I got the, to the last three letters, I'd write three letters, and then say it again, do three yeah. more letters. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was doing too. Yeah. I was, I was like, doing okay. that too. So that was the only way I could do it. But isn't that funny how our mind works? You know, we learn the alphabet forward, and then saying it backwards is like. Right. So oh I mean, my that's, goodness. Uh, yeah, but we all use the same technique. Technique that's funny. So that was our. Um, what Donna says, I was too, and just erased mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so that was our just short little mania oh, minute no, for she's today. She's saying this is Tim's second month anniversary of his miracle. Now, Tim Praise was a the double, Lord. double I lung transplant that is, he getting it done. Donna, yeah. please email, listen to me. Email me your yeah, address so that I can please, no, I, I, we've got to get that check to her for his one night stay. And I just keep forgetting. It's not intentional. So I need you to send an email to morningmana999 at gmail.com. I'm just going to mail a check to you, girl, and let you when is, when handle it. When is he it. out, Donna? When does he get home? Do you know? Do we know um, that? I'm not sure when he comes home. I know he, I thought he had to spend like 90 days. It's, a, it's 90 days. And yeah. I know they moved him to Savannah during, you know, the hurricane, hurricane and right. then he's moved back. But I cannot wait for him to come home oh. and come on this program. I, I am so excited. Come here on the show and everybody go out to eat afterwards yeah won't that be great we will definitely plan yeah. that day for it to be a big um, I mean, donna's coming too right? she yeah. coming over. Yeah, we well i'm sure everybody. she will we yeah. can have everybody out here we can have tim and his wife and yeah. donna, donna and, and we can all have a big yeah it's going to be great so i'm Should excited about that uh for those of you that don't know tim had a double lung transplant yeah. and god has miraculously just touched his body so yeah, he's beating every milestone i know right so, guys, we're down to two minutes, so we're just going to go on and do our uh, reflections and um, in the program. And this was fast today. I know it. Reflection. Reflections of the segment of our show. Whoa. Reflections of our favorite moments of the all right who wants to start um maybe why don't you start all right well i'll go ahead and and start because i want to say i've got two things that i really enjoyed about the show today but i will have to say that i'm most excited about this event coming to aiken but i really enjoyed the speak life segment mm-hmm. today because it just reminded you that nothing is impossible with god Absolutely. and to trust and to commit to him and i just love that okay yeah. I, I enjoyed uh the whole show i'm surprised at how well we got it together after i know the start. Right? <laughs> uh, but i enjoyed the special guest i enjoy uh things like apologetics so i'm excited about that and i really enjoyed uh the mania minute that was fun mm-hmm. okay. I, I I I too like the whole the whole program. Special guest um, was phenomenal. Uh, she did very well. Um, got word out about the uh, the special she bringing in, so that was good. Heather Sargent, we appreciate you coming in, spending your morning with us. And I love the fact that we're not perfect. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, we are truly a live program. Mm -hmm. uh, you see what you get. Um, if we have to do something, we're going to get up and do it. And we don't make any apologies for that. We just keep right on going on because exactly right. we, we've got a show to do and we do it as best we can. So Okay, let's read these last two comments. Drew Sarah okay. said, I really needed this today. Thank you all so much. Um, uh, we're glad you enjoyed it, Drew. And Donna, oh, yes, I'm coming and I will send it. And he will find out tomorrow when he's being released. Excellent. So Thank great. You for that so update, we'll know about Donna. that update. And I'm excited and, about that. Um, I've got to put a word out to our sponsors. We appreciate all the sponsors that um, are behind us 100%. And it's uh, A1 Bonding, all about you, hair and nail, A to Z moving, Ah Sunshine, Blaze and Buzz Catering. And individual sponsors, we have, uh, we have Tony Myers, of course. Michelle, Kathy. Uh, People Blaze Ministry. So we just love y'all. And we need we need more sponsors. To keep always, this going. always. So. Thank Riverfront Lawn Care, yes. uh, Aiken Furniture Company. It's all God Ministry. We have the most awesome sponsors, and we're so thankful we couldn't do this without y'all. So with that, guys, we're going to exit out of here. And it's joy all right, everybody. Thank y'all for listening. God bless, and uh, you're welcome, Joy. We love you guys, and God bless. Have a great week. Thank you guys for joining us today and uh, we love you all and we really appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we'll be back next Monday. It'll be a girls show and I'm sure we will have some good fun stuff lined up for you. So until then, um, thanks guys. We love you and we will see you next week. Talk to you soon. What kind of joy is there? This is Jace Turner, and you are listening to the Voice of Truth Station, WUCC 99.9 .9 FM, Williston, Aiken, Augusta.